have no negative consequences. None. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's right? fine. <laughs> He's just a little guy. Just an angry little guy. Just a little guy. You now know that what you need is in the goose's mouth. The goose's mouth. Yep. There is a slide that it looks like a flying Canadian goose that has like a slide down where the wings are. It's so scary. I believe there's a slide going down the the neck too. So the the it probably has teeth. The beak is also, I think, a slide. Oh, that's yeah. goose slide, goose slide, goose slide, goose slide. I don't, I, I don't like this part. Gliders, I'm already up there, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you look over, I'm already like on top of the goose. I will remind you, your powers are still not fully working yet. Oh, I walk over there then. <laughs> Ugh. Also, we're in public, and it's the it's like it's so eleven in the morning. Pedestrian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you haven't gotten the pocket watch fit. Fu- the the pocket watch is not fully fixed yet. Nope. Okay, but I can look around the goose because you guys are like taking your technology apart. After that, I rolled straight up creeping and got a ten. Nice. This might be a little overkill, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just a goose, but my my uh, straight up creeping questions are like, what happened here recently, and what here is worth grabbing? So basically, I am snooping all on this goose slide and see what I see. Okay, and then also, this looks like sand to me, so I'm gonna just like plop down beside the goose, just like legs out, just like kind of digging under the goose's face, and like checking out little any nook any nooks and crannies so while you're digging around bethany just reaches and bethany you spot it looks like there's a slip of paper like in the goose's beak and you're able to pull it out and it's an old playbill from a show that was put on a few years ago at the globe theater and the show was a Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> ooh, I got a stab in my heart just a little bit, just a little bit. I can't help it. I clamber up in the goose neck. Listeners at home, the slide goes down the goose's head and comes out its beak. It's really cute. Yep. But I clamber up in there <laughs> and I get the piece of paper and I just slide out and I'm like reading it as I slide down. I plop out next to Jumper. <laughs> Do you have anything? Did you find anything? I doubt you found anything. I'm going to find something really soon. This was way up in its neck. Uh, it's a playbill for <laughs> Midsummer Night's Dream. Okay, well, that makes a little bit of sense, but something anybody could have put it there. I mean, it's probably down here because mouth, neck, and mouth are different things. So I mean, you're you the follow. one who said to check the slide, so, I mean, this looks like a clue. I didn't actually. Um, the <laughs> Amazon. Lady, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bad again. You found it like in the beak. Oh, oh, so like as you're coming, as she's coming out. I picture like instead you slide down to the bottom, just like kind of look down, like oh, paper, found it. Okay. Okay. Neck or beak? Neck or beak? It was the beak. Um, but let's. Oh. Uh, Scarlet, come here. Let's take a look. I need to find a water fountain so I can wash off my hands. Maybe my pants? Yeah, there's there's one just like 100 feet. Not even, no, like 30 feet away. 100 feet? Oh, 30 feet. Okay. Yeah. It's a big difference. It's pretty close. Sorry. My brain was not working well with distance. <laughs> were you, just, were you... just 100 yards away? It's not that far away. It's pretty close. It's just on the other side of like the, the, the playground, which is about 30 or 40 feet away. But yeah, you can get cleaned up, and then we can all look at this playbill and see what it says and see if we can yeah. find the next clue. I mean, sounds great. I also gotta, like, load up my... Check to see if anything's gonna load up on the computer properly. Mm. Would you like to roll to assess the situation as you're just awkwardly clustered around the bottom of the slide? Yes. <laughs> no one else can go down the slide right now. We're doing something. 
episode nine. You get to ask one. Here, here. Yes. I will say, it is like the middle of the day on a Monday, so there's probably not a whole lot of people here, so it's not a huge issue. Except for like maybe a couple people with like a couple of two or three year olds running around the other play structure that's more little kid friendly. And they're probably keeping their kids away from the three weird adults sitting at the bottom of the beak of the slide. <laughs> Conspiratorially. <laughs> I'm probably the smallest. I would like climb up like halfway through the slide and just like chill there, you know, like my feet on the ceiling. <laughs> but I also want to look over their shoulder. I'll sit like right on the very bottom of the slide, laptop on my knees. I'm just like kind of crunched up, but kind of in a sort of comfortable. Don't come down here. There's somebody at the end. They're not coming down. I am looking over your shoulder as well, like very intently at this um, playbill. But I got a six, so I got nothing. <laughs> your your mind is still on that uh, on the stopwatch. Yeah, because <laughs> the hand isn't just wiggling loose anymore, but it's still like it's. How do you even begin to fix this? You didn't know how it worked to begin with. I don't know how it worked. It's not haunted, maybe, unless it is. Uh, so I need like a like a ghost mechanic. Nothing's but I don't haunted even know. unless it is. No, that's just what's happening in my head. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about oh, while y'all okay, are. Okay, you're not saying that out loud. Do I know that this is no. broken? No, you don't know about it at all. No one knows about it. You don't know what that's exists. It no one knows about it. <laughs> Madigan knows there's something happening with her, but. She doesn't know all the details. Yeah, we had quite an in-depth conversation last game. (laughs) Yeah. So for your assessed situation, what question do you want to ask? (laughs) Can I slightly amend that first question? Just because I'm just Mm -hmm. trying to make sure the computer's working. What here is causing the computer to link up to show us more information? As you sat down, you notice that file that was had the geolock starts to unlock. And your attack quiz, you're able to like pull something up so you can see kind of what's going on in the background. It looks like it's set up to it has like three locations that it's locked to. The first two will unlock another piece of information. And the third one will unlock something else. You can't tell what, though. But this reads as a failsafe. And somehow, that weird little gremlin guy that's now in our virtual computer was potentially part of a sort of failsafe to verify if this was, um, like, it's like a friend or a foe detection thing. You don't know how it judged you as friendly. Like, what criteria it used. But it totally did. Okay, okay. Yeah, it tried to be a little shit about it, but she just like kind of clicked and dragged and dropped him <laughs> in the recycle bin, but he was kind of <laughs> hanging out and throwing a temper tantrum. Hey, that's fine. Time out! <laughs> yeah, that'll be somewhere else, and that's not gonna have weird implications later. <laughs> The anti-zero type thing is now on my virtual computer, correct? Mm. Yes. It's in your cloud. (laughs) Oh, no. I hope there's nothing important in there. (laughs) We'll deal with those consequences later. Yeah, this playbill. I beefed it. I got a six to look at the playbill, so. Were you assessing or were you creeping? That was just assessing situation for the playbill. Yeah. I don't, well, I realize I don't know if straight up creeping would help with the playbill. (laughs) Yeah, that's more for like a place than a thing. Yeah. Surprisingly, like in good condition considering it's a few years old. It's got the little, the little drawing of a face with a tongue sticking out in the same kind of like acidic green than you've seen is kind of his signature. So I will give you that as there's a mark of the prankster 
can't tell if it was left by the prankster or someone who was a fan. Okay, well, this is definitely supposed to be here. We read this play in school, but I can't, I don't remember. It's something about a guy who was a donkey, but only sometimes. And there were fairies, I don't remember. Um, I don't see what this would have anything to do with Prankster. Well, the whole play is about a lot of kind of pranks. I didn't do real good in English class. The guy who turned into a donkey was turned into a donkey for a fairy prank. Oh, okay, see, that makes way more sense. Because I was, like, caught up on the donkey thing, and I was like, I don't know any donkey imagery for Brinkster. I would like to try and use my little faux computer thing to scan the document and look, and, like, run it through, like, an algorithm or something to look for codes. May I do that? Yeah. I believe that would be your Kirby tech. My Kirby can't craft. Oh, that's my, that's my, yeah, that'd be Kirby more like craft. alien tech. It's plus freak. Okay. Yeah, then. Okay. Bowling plus freak. Oh, shoot. Oh, dash it all. Do I have inspiration? I'm just kidding. Ha 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 ha. That is five. I mean, we have team points. We are helping each other. Yes. Yeah, team's not going to help with that. No. It's, it's well, not. It's not. Hold on. I have a move called won't let you down. When you help a teammate, you can spend two mm. out of the team pool to give it plus two. So that would give you a seven. You're trying to scan it and it's not working and you're like shaking it. And I just like give you a pep talk and I'm like, come on, you're like real good at this. Your stuff's really cool. Like it's going to work. It's going to work. It's totally going to work. Hold it flat. <laughs> just hold it flat. <laughs> I'm just hold it really flat. Okay. Actually, Scarlet, you should do this. My hands are really shaky. Jumper's scanning the playbill. I'm hyping you both up, but you have to hold it because my <laughs> hands are shaky. Okay, I hold it. I hold like this, like the hand scanner, right? That you go like slowly, but I'm trying to hold the playbill. So, so yes, um, <laughs> Miss Sentinel, you could hold this still in your <clears throat> sturdy hand. I would really appreciate it. Dirty hands? Sturdy. How uncomfortable is Bethany feeling right now? Bethany is so confused. <laughs> no. By this. <laughs> you heard what I said, right? Sturdy hands. Yeah. With an S. We heard you. I heard dirty. Okay. okay <laughs> I originally heard dirty. <laughs> Glider's like... Scarlet wasn't even digging in the sand. Scarlet was trying to get the computer. Her hands are dirty. <laughs> and since your hands are just so clean, there won't be any sort of, you know, residue to get on them and or, uh, you know, to, to uh, mess it up in any way. So if you could just, I mean, <laughs> I mean, just, you know, just hold it for a second so I can scan it. That would be great. Thanks. I hold it for her. Or for oh, them. Her. Her. For them. Whichever works. Her. They. Preference being her. Okay. Also, accommodating being they. I take the hand scanner and I go. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> And I scan down the document front and back. After you get the scan, it takes a couple seconds for your system to process. Because just the, also the way he leaves ciphers and codes, it's weird. You crack it faster than most people, but <laughs> it still takes I time. would feel like since I know him, they, him... I might have a cipher that's closer to his code than other people. Yeah, that's that's why you're able to crack it faster. It just takes a second. It would also take people a while to figure out where to look. Fair enough. So it takes a couple of seconds, but it eventually translates to check under our seats 
because either you, that is where you bet the prankster at that play, or you went to see it, to, or like you were seeing it together, or seeing it with some friends. There's something left under the seats, and you know that he knows you're trying to find him. Okay, so I guess I should have asked this question earlier. Do I know that I went to this play with a prankster? If he was trying to hide that he was the prankster, I don't think he did a super great job of it, probably. <laughs> you saw the show with his alter ego? You know which seat. Scene change. I do that, and I, <laughs> and I bring out my foldable scooter. We my, have to take I, the bus. My foldable scooter. <laughs> And go, oh wait, no, Scarlet has a motorcycle. <laughs> and I <laughs> with a sidecar. <laughs> oh, baby. I'll follow along. You just have to go slower than 30 miles an hour. Before you all leave, Bethany, give me another roll to assess. That's a 10. So as you're getting ready to leave to go to the theater, Bethany, you notice there's a guy sitting at a sort of picnic table. Looks like he's repairing a radio. Could possibly be able to repair other things as well. Huh. He's just a, a gentleman just working on an old radio on a picnic table. Yeah, it looks like he's repairing something. Ah, interesting. I think we're like back in the parking lot at the motorcycle and you're getting your scooter ready. And I'm like, oh gosh, my scrunchie. I think I dropped it by the goose. I'll be right back. Your scrunchie. Oh my gosh, that's so serious. Do you need another one? I have so many hair ties in my bag. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, appreciate it. But I, I really like this one. It's like a lucky scrunchie. <laughs> oh man, do I get that? Wow. Okay, go find it. We'll wait for you. Yeah, I walk back to the goose, and I get to a side of it and, like, pretend to pick something up. Also, uh, my hair is way too short to wear a scrunchie in it. <laughs> <laughs> so is <Yeah>. jumpers. <laughs> I still like the jumpers, just like, that makes sense. Perfect sense. And... As I walk back, I'm gonna swing by, like a little wider, uh, so I can walk by this guy. Be super cool, super chill. And I'm gonna like pretend like I just noticed him. Oh wow, is that like a like a old radio? He looks up from what he's doing. He's like, yeah, just repairing us for one of the guys over there points over to where there's some people playing chess because it's a park, so you can't have to have some people playing chess. I, I like fixing things. Yeah, that's cool. You don't see like old like tech like that much anymore. If people just buy new stuff. Yeah, making intense eye contact. Yeah, do you like do that regularly? Is this like your job? It's more of a hobby, but I have done it professionally. Do you, need, you have something you need fixed? Yeah, I think I have, like, this, like, couple vintage things. You know, they're just sitting around, but it would be cool if they would work instead of, you know, just gathering dust. If I could get them fixed, that'd be really cool. Do you have, like, a card or a number or a name or... Gosh, we sound so similar. Roll plus mundane. Oh, gosh. That's my best score, so that's an 11. He says, well, I don't have business cards, but I might kind of like digs around in his pockets and like pulls out a pad of sticky notes. What color are they? Just generic yellow sticky notes. And <laughs> so he um, jots a first name and a phone number. Yeah, just shoot me a text whenever and we can meet up somewhere to and I can take a look at what you got. Awesome, thank you. I'll oh, do that. Oh, I want to be there so bad. And I nonchalantly walk back. Yeah. I don't know if Jumper noticed that whole thing, but I'm pretty sure Madigan was aware of what was happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely watching. Can I roll to see if I noticed? Like, overheard? I don't know how far away we are. I would have been trying to be as discreet as possible, which I know is hard for me to do. I'll say just roll plus mundane. 
Oh, 11. You absolutely clock that Bethany stops to talk to this guy, chat for a bit, who is in the middle of repairing this old, but it's in good condition for old, older radio. You said he's an older guy? Yeah. Like 40s. Oh, 40s. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. I put my kickstand down and I uh, saunter over to where Bethany is and I uh, go, Did you say text? I, I love texting. What's your favorite emoji or emoticon even? Looks up from where he was starting to repair like the internal components of his radio and just looks up at you confused. I know it's kind of confusing. I mean, I just have like a fascination with like, you know, like with um, emojis, emoticons, people's preferences. And I'm just kind of gathering a basic mental survey of the general population, excuse me, the general population, just because, you know, I like to know what I should use in order to seem more mm, friendly. So what are yours? What are the ones that you use to show that you are happy? Madigan, and Bethany, what are you doing while this is happening? <laughs> Bethany, are you just slightly dying on the inside? I'm dying on the inside and ignoring <laughs> what Jumper's doing and getting into the, um, getting, because I thought I was being super smooth, super smooth and chill, and was just going to jump in the sidecar and we were going to leave. <laughs> and I think I am, like, getting in the sidecar, and I'm like, Jay! Jumps! We gotta go! Run a time crunch! Crunch, crunch, crunch! Yeah, I know! Just okay, I gotta... Uh, the emoji thing, you know, the emoji thing. Emoticons are are greater, but I gotta find it out, you know! I, and I uh. give her, like, the death glare, because this guy in his mid-40s said, text me, and I'm... I'm, like, freaking out because, dude, he'd say, call me. Not everybody's up on that same technology, so. I have a feeling this guy may be similar or is working for or is the doppelganger. Repairing old tech. Okay. You give me a bad look, I give you a bad look back. Like, (laughs) come over here. Be right there! I give you a very genial look and like a <laughs> I like tap an I invisible know. watch and I'm like You're so tired of all of this. I get it, but this is important for my mental survey. It's colon D. Everyone uses colon D. That's the answer. Prompt him. No props from the studio audience. <laughs> so as this oh, is going on, Jumper, you, you look back and see he's pulled out the latest gen phone. <laughs> I actually used some custom ones a friend of mine created and just like pulls up and like shows you where to get these. Like you can design little custom emojis. Sorry, I have or- an orange phone, so they they don't really work with the uh, the robot ones. This app is actually available on most platforms and the designs adjust based on what kind of phone you have and what kind of phone you're sending to. This guy's gonna tell us about his startup, his app that he made. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so- oh no. Where, where did you- It's why he only does this part time. He made his millions. My friend. I mean, like, I gotta go in just a second, but like, I really wanna know, like, who started this? Where'd you get this? Wh- whose information is this? I like to know everything I can about an app before I get it. I look to Madigan. And I'm like, I think she got distracted. We gotta go. Madigan is like leaning forward with her elbow on the front of her bike, just fingers clutching like the center part of her nose between her eyes. Like, oh my God. (laughs) I see that like sort of out of the corner of my eyes. And I just kind of do like a, 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 a finger up and just like a whoop. And like extend my arm into like a just a second. Jumps, we gotta go. We can get boba tea on the way. Oh, boba tea is great, but finding out where apps came from is better. Okay, we'll meet you at the theater. Bye. Wait, wait. Oh, ah. I look back at Jumper and I just, I'm like, 
like, she's not going to listen. So I do like this really loud whistle. I put my fing two fingers in my mouth and loud whistle. Let's go. He smiles apologetically. That that whistle totally like gets me like Pavlov, right? Pavlov. <laughs> there we go. And I just like yeah. run to my scooter. I'm like, thank you very much for your time. Um, I will check that app out. Thank you. She's got your number. She's going to text me. And I run to my scooter, I flip out the kickstand, and I jump on. I rev my engine, and we just go. Yeah, so Jumper's got a new app that she's going to be mildly obsessed with for a while. And Bethany has a potential lead on who might be able to fix the motor stopwatch. You just got a phone number, and the first name is Jason. Jason, okay. And as you're peeling away, you hear, just hear him call out, Hey, Ernest! Got your radio working. To the person whose radio he was repairing. So you're heading to the theater. You have been listening to Queen City Supers, a graveyard tape side story using the game Masks. Masks A New Generation is a superhero role-playing game in which a team of young heroes fights villains, saves lives, and tries to figure out who they are. Featuring Caitlin as Madigan, aka Scarlet Sentinel, the Janus. Jess as Bethany Bertolucci, aka Glider, the Beacon. Ian as Marcus, aka Kid Phoenix, the Doomed. And Brianna Jean as the Keeper and Producer. 